All right. Uh, good evening. Welcome to this channel. And how's it going? Wow. Hey, Thomas. Good to see you. Get to the chopper. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. You know the movie. Okay. So, hey, Tommy. So, um, tonight, got a few things planned. Classy. The music reminds me of a revolving cocktail lounge in Florida. Well, okay. Sounds good. So, tonight... Excuse me, I'm smacking my lips here because I just finished a chocolate chip muffin that I bought from the market. All I taste is the chemicals and preservatives. Uh, 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 I should just, it's a box of four from the bakery department. And, uh, ugh. Fat. I should just throw it out. I had one, but anyway, okay. So tonight, um, going to discuss uh, a movie. The title is Predator from 1987. I'm going to do a movie review, and um, and then I'm also going to <clears throat> go over some observations in the um, watch world on the YouTube channels, all the different wristwatch themed channels. I don't really uh, get involved with many of those channels, many of the same channels anymore, mainly because I'm banned, uh, you know, by sinister forces at work, but also because I just don't, uh, I've, I've gone through a lot of shrinkage as to, as in reference to my attention span, there's been definite mental shrinkage I just don't, uh, I just don't have the interest in, in a lot of the stuff, but we'll, we'll get into that. All right. So, um, nine people watching, uh, let me just say up front, um, give the show a thumbs up if you like it, give it a thumbs down if you hate it, either way, it's fine. Click subscribe if you're not a subscriber and you love this uh, crappy content and to click the bell. All that is um, really nice to do. And in fact, let's uh, let's get a banner up there right now, and then we'll get right into it. <clears throat> One moment, please. Scrolling through all of my banners here. Nah, not that one. Not that one. Yeah, this is nice. Nice and polite. All right. By the way, there are lots of shows on right now, I noticed. So by all means, if you're more interested in, if you really want to watch what's going on live on some of those other dynamic channels, by all means, go ahead and go there. This show will be available for replay at your leisure. We don't put things in membership here because I don't have a membership uh, category on my channel because if I did, well, like, why would I? Nobody would join. So, <clears throat> you know, it's that kind of confidence that keeps me going every day. Damn, that damn muffin. Shit. I'm probably going to vomit it up. All right, let's, uh, let's do first some Watch World observations and then we'll get right and then we'll follow that with the lengthy and uh movie review of predator 1987 all right so this is only going to be not long i just want to cover this quickly muffin Ugh. shit i should use some listerine get that taste out of my mouth yeah, anyway, okay, let's do it. So, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of goings on in Thailand. Many of the uh, YouTubers uh, we all know uh, went to Thailand for uh, Lux's wedding reception. Very nice. And then um, 
Marcelo, the uh, restaurateur from Tokyo, went there even though he was not invited by Lux to the reception, which is, that's a head scratching thing right there. Then we saw him do the Coco the Monkey George Costanza dance in front of the airport, talking to Lux and Archie, which uh, was really, I talked about that uh, yesterday. And then um, today I didn't watch any of the uh, Thailand goings on. Like I said, it's due to uh, just my mental shrinkage. I just don't have the, uh, you know, let them all have a good time and and the audience. I just, um, you know, um, I'm just so detached from so much of that. Really. And I think that's a good thing. Anyway, but uh, today I'd like to talk about... Um, I clicked on uh, which channel was it? See, I'm already forgetting. I'm already forgetting. Talk about mental shrinkage. Holy shit. Well, I clicked on the. Oh, that was it. I watched the. I looked at the Tim because I wasn't going to watch the Thailand stuff. So um, I saw Tim Wright was on. So I clicked on to the Tim Wright channel, and he had a large viewership, maybe 300 or something like that. And it was Tim and OC, and they were talking about Paul Thorpe, a video on his channel or a live stream that Tim was saying was the most amazingly screwy video that needs to be seen by a panel of Viennese psychiatrists. It was that bizarre I, I don't i didn't see the video and i don't know the video he was talking about it might still be on paul thorpe's channel i, I don't know apparently he has two channels so uh paul i never follow paul thorpe uh, really i you know i know the name it's always being talked he's always being talked about but i've only watched maybe a few three four videos on his channel i just don't um it's just not a channel that i particularly uh follow you know regularly and um though i've seen him on other channels and um tim and oc were just like uh, lambasting this video and making fun of it and saying you just got to see this it's an absolute classic so maybe i can uh, if i look at that later maybe tomorrow if it's up <clears throat> i'll see what tim and oc were talking about but the, the chat on the uh, channel is uh, kind of amusing with all the uh, people there, uh, you know, making comments. And so I was there for about a half hour and uh, yeah, it was fine. And, uh, but before I remember it, before that, I saw Oshin, Oshin O'Malley channel from Venice, Italy. He was on. So I clicked over there and I don't watch him regularly, but uh, sometimes I'll look at the channel and, uh, he was doing the cigar smoking uh, bit, you know, and a glass of Jameson's. And he had a guest on, some young lady, maybe from New York City or Brooklyn. I think you know, she talked about being from Brooklyn. And uh, it was uh, just a uh, regular um, anti-Israel, anti-Jewish uh, hate fest, anti-Semitic hate fest. Uh, the woman who we had on was suffering from a variety of derangement syndromes. It was um, not laughable, but yet not painful. It was, uh, and not astonishing because, you know, we've all seen videos that are astonishing to the point where now they're not astonishing. And uh, the woman is just uh, a hater and uh, very, very ignorant of uh, history, facts, Contemporary facts, historic facts. Yes, I said it. Fact. You know, for you know who he loves when I say that. And uh, the host of the show, Mr. Oshin, he uh, he was going pretty much right along with her. He loves, uh, you know, he's an anti-Semite. It's just, you know, written all over him. Just listen to him talk. And hey, listen, you know, he's allowed to be an anti-Semite. I have no problem with that. If he wants to... Uh, if he wants to be an anti-anything, that's, you know, it's got nothing to do with me. It's his channel. 
But uh, listening to the two of them was, especially the, the guest he had was just like, uh, after about, I, I don't know how long I watched it, maybe a half hour. And uh, I said, okay, enough of this. Uh, my brain is just, uh, there's still a lot left. Still a lot of brain matter, gray matter left, but I need to be careful about what, I want to be protective of what I have, you know and not let that all rot away or get diminished from listening to people who are just uh, ignorant people, you know. I would be happy to talk with O'Sheen about and, and lots of stuff, you know, music, Ireland, uh, Irish musicians, all kinds of stuff. But, um, you know, he's got this fixation on uh, Jews from New York City, the Israel-Palestinian issue. Well, there's nothing compared to the guest that he had on. Um, to the guest he had on today's show. Check it out if you want to. Um... Yeah, it was it was really awful. Anyway, okay, um, Thomas, what do you mean we? What do you what are you saying? What do you, what do you mean we? Uh, classy, those poor Aussie bastards who were denied their McDonald's. What did AC3 do? Yeah, well, I don't know anything about what you're referring to because I haven't watched coverage from Bangkok. Um, the last thing I saw from Thailand was um, Dodger, Jamie, Marcelo, and um, Roland in the hotel room all shirtless and Jamie kissing Marcelo's uh, bald head. I said, okay, that's, that's enough. Okay. Thomas, Dutch, the general is saying that a couple of our friends are about to get squeezed and we can't let that happen. Well, I have a feeling Thomas really likes this movie Predator. Wow. I'm glad he's watching. What do you mean, we? Oh, we. I see. We can't let that happen. That's the general, right? I'm coming in with you, Dutch. Thomas has got this whole movie memorized. Wow, this is impressive. I'm like that with some movies, but um, none of the Arnold movies. All right, so uh, that's my, um, yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> just um, what an assortment of personalities and channels and people and uh, absolute uh, ignorance, proudly, proudly being ignorant. And uh, I think she said she didn't graduate high school and never went to college as well, which not necessarily means anything. I mean, Tom Cruise didn't graduate high school. But, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, anyway. I'm coming in with you, Dutch. It uses the jungle. Right, right. Wow, Thomas really knows this movie. All right, so that's all I want to talk about in terms of the watch activities. Uh, uh, so whatever Paul Thorpe channel was like that Tim was just incredulous about uh, the video that he did uh, on Thorpe's channel. I, I don't know what it was, but him and OC just couldn't to get over it. So maybe check out the Tim channel, see what video they were referring to and check out the Thorpe channel if you're so inclined. If, um, if you want to watch O'Sheen, by all means, watch the O'Sheen O'Malley channel. I mean, it is just... Uh, Right. Okay. So now we're going to change gears and we're going to move on to the movie review. Thomas, if we can see it, we can kill it. Wow, Thomas has really got this movie down. Unbelievable. Well, not unbelievable. It's terrific. All right. I'm going to uh, lower these, this awful background music. And in fact, I'll change it to something less annoying. And uh, let's go ahead and start the movie review of Predator. So give me just a moment on the uh, screen share. Put a lot of work into, into tonight's show. A lot of work. All right, let's, uh, let's do it. So we're going to talk about this movie, um, Predator. <laughs> All right, Thomas. Yeah. 
And um, this movie apparently was a really big hit. I've heard on my channel, I don't know how many times people saying, a viewer saying, I can't believe you haven't seen Predator. Holy cow, it's, it's fantastic. You got to watch that movie. This has gone on for a long time. And I never paid attention to it. Like, I did watch Commando. In fact, I watched Commando a couple months ago. And then I realized, oh, this is a comedy. Now I get it. Anyway, um, I've seen lots of Arnold Schwarzenegger films. You know, it's, it, what it comes down to is if you like Arnold, you'll like the movie. If you don't like Arnold, then you just won't care. I mean, I think that's... Um, I think that's... Uh, pretty much it. Terminator, you know, Conan. Maybe there are some good movies in his uh, in his uh, film credits. Uh, maybe some just really terrific. Uh, yeah, you know, whatever. Mattel Philippe, hey, uh, welcome. Good to see you. Forbin, uh, Predator had our hero wearing the Seiko H558, an analog digital watch that subsequently became known, known as the Arnie. Yes, that's correct. Um, long time ago, I talked with uh, Dis Urs Dis about that, and um, he has that watch or the Willard that Martin Sheen wears in Apocalypse Now, or both of them. He, he, I remember talking with him about that. I looked up that watch, and it's not really a very good looking watch, uh, but you know, whatever. If you like it, you buy it, or whatever. P. Glenn, last time I was in New York, I ended up at the nexus of the universe, the corner of first and first. Okay, well, did you take a picture? All right, so um, everybody seems to know this movie. Uh, I'm watching it now, 1987. So that's uh, how long ago? 37 years ago or something like that. I didn't go to high school either, like Oshin's guest, so that's close enough. All right, let's uh, let's begin the review. Oh, and now this is something that really, I don't know why I did it. I think Crappy missed it. Last time I was in New York, I ended up at the nexus of the universe, the corner of first and first. I, I get it. Yeah, you know, that's another movie I've never seen, and um, I keep hearing over many years I should watch that movie. That's with Kurt Russell or uh, Christopher Walken. I think Kurt Russell, maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Oh, Kramer said that. Uh, is that the episode when he was calling from a phone booth? Uh, he wanted Elaine to pick him up? I, I don't know. Kurt Russell. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll put it on the list. So uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, yesterday I felt like watching the movie because I wasn't watching any of that Thailand uh, content, and um, due to the uh, brain shrinkage I'm going through, and um, I thought, you know, um, boy, and then I remembered so many people kept talking about uh, Predator. And then somebody mentioned, oh, it was uh, Mental, not Mental Jock, um, Jax, who I was talking to a week ago or so. And the topic of, uh, well, this is nothing to do with it. Ross Rachel Brady came up and and he said, uh, yeah, it's like at the end of the movie when somebody says um, something, maybe it was, uh, who's that actor, Robert Downey or somebody uh, said something and I thought, well, maybe that was Predator. So I, I don't know what that movie was that he was referring to, but maybe I could look that up on the video. Because my videos are up. They're not in membership, like I said, because who would pay for a membership on this channel? So I thought, you know, I'll watch Predator. I'll look for it. And I couldn't find it anywhere on a free channel, even on illegal channels coming from Russia. I mean, in English. So um, I thought, you know, I'll buy it on Amazon Prime. I can't believe I did it. So I paid three ninety nine, and uh, I don't remember the last time I paid for a movie on Amazon. I mean, usually everything is uh, free. There's so much free, but um, 
All right. I was in a strange mood, I guess. Billy, you know something? What is it? I'm scared. Bullshit. You ain't afraid of no man. There's something out there and it ain't no man. Thomas has got this whole movie inside and out. All right. Last Boy Scout. Is that a movie? I don't know. We make a stand now where there will be no one left to go to the chopper. Wow. All right. So I actually paid the $3.99 on Amazon Prime and I watched the movie straight through. It didn't need any muffins or uh, pizza. I just did the whole thing. And uh, so let's let's discuss it. Here's here's a picture, and um, here's Arnold Schwarzenegger, Apollo Creed, and um, here's the guy who was a Navy SEAL. I just forgot his name. You know the guy. And this guy who uh, was pretty good. This guy here, uh, real lunatic. And uh, this guy, who nobody knows who he is, same goes for this guy here. They're just uh, two actors they got at a bargain price to fill up the team. And um, first, first comment on the movie. I'm afraid to even get into the first comment. All right. Um, Everybody in the movie, all these, uh, you know, special forces, soldiers, uh, commando types, etc. <clears throat> they're all wearing cover, various kinds of cover. Um, for example, here, um, the Navy SEAL guy, he's wearing a Aussie kind of hat. That's cool. These guys are wearing like a USMC cover. Over here, this guy's got the boonie kind of hat. It's cool. This guy was wearing a hat in most of the movie. I mean, some kind of cover, but or cap. But in the whole movie, Arnold doesn't wear any kind of cap, helmet, baseball cap, boonie cap, Aussie hat, nothing. And that's one of the first rules of uh, soldiering on commando jungle things is you don't wear your helmet because it makes noise banging against the brushes and twigs and stuff. But you put on like a baseball cap or uh, some kind of cover. The whole movie is not wearing anything. And I was wondering, why isn't he wearing any kind of, um, you know, uh, you know, Rambo doesn't do that either, but everybody else does. And I, I just found that, um, what was the reason he decided not to wear any kind of what they call cover or cap, anything? Uh, yeah, I just, um, I mean, like right here, there you go. Perfect. I um, I found that uh, perplexing. Anyway, so let's uh, move on. So here's a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger from a Commando. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, from... Um, well, from every movie he's ever done. But um, it's the same pose from every movie. But this is from uh, Predator 1987. But it's the same... You could put this picture for any one of his movies. They're all, it's all the same. And again, no uh, no hat in the whole movie. I, I just found that... Uh... Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, well. Anyway. All right, let's take a pause here and look at the hate comments. All right, let's catch up here. Um... Uh, right, okay. Uh, ah, P. Clen, Super Chat from Australia, $2. Thank you very much, P. Clen. That's awfully nice of you. All right. Poncho and Hawkins. Oh, those are the other two guys' names? The guys who we don't know who, they're, who they really are? I don't have time to bleed. Right, okay. Um, Bill Duke taught me how to dry shave. All right. Tropic Thunder. Maybe that's the movie uh, that uh, Jack's referred to. Yeah, I've heard about that movie also being kind of funny and... Well, okay. Craig Shit. Arnold Schwarzenegger did a good job as governor, but he reverted to rhino status after his stint. Oh, he was awful as a governor. Just terrible. But that's another show. Uh, when they say cover, Arnold don't listen. I guess so. Shot in the dark. Hey, man. How you doing? 
27 people watching this show with all the other shows on tonight. 28 people watching. Wow, that's awfully nice. Uh, let's check the thumbs up. I bet you I have two. Eight thumbs up. Well, keep them coming. Thank you very much. All right. So um, here's the story. I'll try and explain the story. I think everyone's seen it, so I won't be giving away any um, any secrets or anything. Okay. So um, the movie opens up, and there's some alien spacecraft approaching the earth patel yeah i talked about that at the beginning of the show i i really have no uh nothing else to add to what i offered at the beginning i i just not following it it's um i explained it at the beginning you know but uh, yeah um thank you thank you very much so the movie opens up with this spaceship obviously an alien spaceship hurl hurt was it hurtling hurtling hurling speeding towards earth and uh that's we just get that only reference to the some spaceship coming towards earth and then the movie shifts to um arnold and a bunch of guys hanging out somewhere in central america or south america we don't really know and um they're all meeting for something so um arnold meets uh this two-star general the glasses guy is shane black yes that's correct very good what is this i don't know either i heard higgins donated big money to see it to see what predator gentleman masterclass what's going on here yeah, okay. So, um, uh, let me say this about the acting in the movie. Let me just get this out of the way. The only two act, uh, Arnold is Arnold. I mean, it's a non actor actor. If you like Arnold, it doesn't matter. If you like Chuck Norris, it doesn't matter. If you like Jean Claude Van Damme, it doesn't matter because, you know, you like watching them. But to say acting is just, it's not acting. Now, there were some great, the best actor in the show was the guy who played the two star general. He he's a highly, I mean, a real favorite of mine, uh, character actor from the 50s, 60s, 70s. He did every possible TV show you could think of. And he, he's terrific. His name was R.G. Armstrong. And uh, I looked him up again just to see when he passed away. And it said that he also appeared in the, um, what's that group? Um, the group that I don't listen to with uh, the guy who's the crappy guitar player, uh, the three the three man group uh, with the crappy drummer, um, Enter Sandman. What's the name of that group? I can't think. I don't remember. I got that mental problem. But uh, he was in the original video, R.G. Armstrong of Enter Sandman. So I go, oh, that's interesting. So I looked up Enter Sandman official video on YouTube. It's got like 650 million views. Metallica, excuse me. Thank you, Craig. No, not Kareem. And uh, he was in that video. One of the most ridiculous, disorientingly, whatever videos I've ever seen as a music video. But I guess if you're in the Metallica, it was kind of cool. But uh, So he was the best actor in the movie because he was a real actor. Um, and then uh, others also acting wise, well, Arnold, you know, not whatever. He's just Arnold. The guy here who played Apollo Creed, he was very good. He was fine. He really did a good job. Um, this guy, Bill Duke, yeah, he was fine. And I liked, uh, you know, uh, this guy, the uh, the former Navy SEAL. I, I don't remember his name either. You know, the guy. Um, you know, um, Jesse Ventura. Yeah, he was fine. Uh, and the other two guys were just, uh, you know, wallpaper decoration. Just, you know. And this guy here, I've seen him in some other stuff, and he, he's just a lunatic. I think he's passed away by now. And, uh, yeah, okay, so um, it's not a movie for acting if you want to watch acting. But if you like Arnold and bullshit, then you'll like it. Okay. This is basically what you see in the whole movie, just jungle scenes. Turns out they filmed the, whole, the entire movie in Mexico. And there must have been an absolutely exhausting, grueling production. Uh, I don't doubt that at all. But this is, this is basically the movie. 
Arnold against the commies, Arnold against uh, Rambo, Arnold against uh, the secret agents, Arnold against, in this one, the space alien, the predator. It's the same thing, you know, Arnold against the kindergarten students, uh, Arnold against Danny DeVito. It's all the same, every movie. Okay. So um, he meets up with the general and apparently, uh, and Arnold smoking a cigar because that adds to his, you know, character uh, creativity there. And um, the general is old friends with uh, Dutch. That's Arnold's name. And apparently he's the number one special forces expert out there. And he's so good that uh, for this special mission, they didn't recruit from the regular Green Berets or uh, SEALs or anywhere. They, they went to Arnold because that's how good he is. He's better than Rambo. So uh, they put together the team. And um, Apollo Creed. Sorry, forgetting his name. Forget everybody's name. Uh, he tells them, they were surprised, they go back to, quote, Vietnam. All these guys are hardened veterans. They've seen all shit all around the world, you know. And uh, so they all go in together to uh, rescue some state, uh, state Department official who's got valuable information, some ambassador or consular official or something like that. The plot doesn't matter, you know. It's just shoot, shoot, and Arnold against the uh, alien. That's the so they go into the jungle and there's all kinds of shooting and uh, all kinds of stuff. And then as they're, you know, crawling through the jungle, going over all the stuff and somehow uh, we, we meet the alien. He's kind of invisible, but he appears momentarily and he's got, um, here's the alien and uh, he's got some kind of dreadlocks going on and um, that's a helmet kind of thing. So he's kind of like, and he's got a mechanical computer thing on his arm, forearm that controls stuff. So he's kind of machine and life form, I guess. And so one by one, this alien creature is killing everyone on uh, the on Arnold's team. Okay, that's an original storyline. Gee, where have I seen that before? Gee, yeah. Anyway, and of course, uh, everybody gets killed except Arnold. Which, you know, anyway. Yeah, yeah, so uh, lots of shooting, lots of you know, massive machine guns and shooting and explosions and hand grenades and, you know, uh, <clears throat> um, trick devices and sneaky, sneaky uh, jungle warfare stuff. And one by one, the alien guy, the predator, kills everyone on the team until the end of the movie when it's him against Arnold or Arnold against the alien as you can see here, um, when they meet at the end, uh, the alien decides to uh, take off his helmet. And instead of just, uh, he's got this like a laser cannon thing that pops up on his shoulder, kind of like a parrot sitting on a pirate's shoulder. You know, like Inspector Clouseau when he put on the pirate costume with the inflatable parrot. So here he's got this thing that pops up, some kind of laser device, and it's a powerful weapon. And instead of killing him with that or his uh, steel hands or uh, X-ray uh, powerful beams, whatever, he takes off the helmet and decides to go hand-to-hand -hand combat with Arnold at the end of the film, which doesn't make any sense. Or why would he have gone hand-to-hand? -hand? I guess maybe he thought he developed respect for this guy because... Um, he was able to survive the entire uh, pursuit from the Predator and still survive. So maybe out of respect, he decided to put down the weapons and just go hand to hand. I mean, whatever. Yeah, very Rasta kind of looking alien. The alien ship tumbled to Earth like Marcello entered a bang park. Oh, okay. Crappy is not following Marcello, losing his passport. I heard that. I heard about the bag. Falling off a tuk-tuk live on air. No, I didn't see that. Inhaling 20 nitrous balloons. Thank God I didn't see that. And riding the bull outside Nana Plaza in the Hooters. No, I didn't see any of that. I just saw part of that, uh, Patel. And like I mentioned, I... Um, you know, Patel... Um, uh, uh, what's his name? Marcelo banned me on his channel a couple weeks ago. 
the uh, sinister the sinister forces working behind the scenes got to him and and they uh, and he he banned me he said yeah crappy fuck him fuck crappy you know fuck him yeah yeah that's i talked about that uh, on another show recently yeah so I, I have zero interest really in you know anyway so um not to mention the X-rated stuff. Uh, yeah, whatever. Listen, you know, I saw the good stuff when Archie was in Nana Plaza, you know, 10 plus years ago. That was the good stuff. That was entertaining. I'm, I'm you know, watching uh, whatever. Let's move on. Jesse Ventura was the governor of Minnesota. Big time libertarian. Yeah, that's correct. Everyone loves Arnold. Well, all right, you know. Delta Force. I saw that Chuck Norris, uh, Lee Marvin movie, whatever that was called. Um, they need to rescue a MacGuffin. That's correct. That's the Alfred Hitchcock analysis. Mike, the high five turned arm wrestle between Arnie and Carl Weathers is exactly how I picture what would happen when Crappy and Docs meet. Why does everybody talk about me and Docs? I know it comes from that other guy because he loves just, uh, you know, whatever. Amazing. All right, let's um, continue up. Herman is promoting this channel on my video. I see. Okay. Um, the electrician said you struck Mookie's channel. Now, I don't know what you're talking about, little Dave. I never struck Mookie's channel. It's total bullshit. Did he really say that? I, I'll believe it. You know, he just makes stuff up. He just pulls stuff up out of his ass and just says it. And whatever sticks, he just continues with. Absolutely nothing to that. Okay. I know nothing about the status of Mookie's channel. Okay. Need to go up two more octaves for... Yeah, right. Okay. I like Stallone better than Arnold, too. Okay. This is the content you need, Crappy. Loving this. Really? Thank you. Send send those uh, five hundred dollar PayPal's. Thank you very much. Fistful of dynamite. I never saw that. Was that with um, Rod Steiger and James Coburn? Maybe. Don't know. All right. So let's get back to the uh, the story here. Um. Okay. So uh, they're going man to man. They fight, and the guy pulls off his uh, helmet. The alien pulls off the helmet. Nowhere in the movie is it explained why he came to Earth and why he's killing everybody and who he is, the alien, what he's doing in the jungle of what turns out to be Mexico, but it's it's basically any Central American, you know, Latin American country, and. Um, the whole, there's no story, really. It's just the action, the explosions, the alien chase, the predator and the prey storyline. That's, you know. So um, let's move on to another picture here. Yeah, here's the gizmo that uh, he uses to kill everybody. And and he has a tremendous strength. And he becomes invisible. He, he can appear and then he disappears. Also, the guy who played the predator was an actor named, uh, if I remember, uh, Kevin Peter Hall, he was like seven foot two, and but he was totally in the costume the whole time. And then he was the same guy in Harry and the Hendersons, where he played like a Sasquatch. And he he died very young, uh, sadly. Uh, but um, when I was reading Wikipedia, it said the uh, alien was originally going to go for go to uh, Jean Claude Van Damme, and uh, we'll discuss that a little bit later. So here's a picture of Arnold from every movie he's ever been in. Okay, so this this is uh, Predator, but you know, name the movie, it's the same picture. He's got that one pose. Like Chuck Norris has one pose. One look, you know. Now, who could play Predator if they were recasting the movie or making it now? I think, well, you could give it to this guy, Gene Simmons. He could have played the Predator. He's very tall. He doesn't need the costume with the helmet. He just do it like this, you know, and he can bang people over the head with the bass guitar and uh, he could have been cast uh, as Predator. See, I mean, not much difference. So I th uh, at the end of the movie, uh, the alien is killed by a Schwarzenegger in a giant explosion 
and uh, what happens is the uh, the guy the the alien is dying. He has green uh, luminescent uh, super luminova blood, a bright green color, and um, he realizes he's dying. So he pushes the buttons on his forearm computer assembly thing, and he self destructs with a giant uh, like a bomb explosion. Arnold is about a uh, hundred, two hundred feet away from when this happens, but amazingly he survives because he's Arnold. Then the helicopter lands with the general and uh, the girl, who has no part in the movie at all except being a girl. Um, you know, and um, you know, and uh, Arnold is rescued by the general in the helicopter, and that's the end of the movie. Um, so I was thinking, well, you know, if you're going to make the movie up again, uh, who would you cast? And I think Gene Simmons would be a good, uh, good casting for the Predator. He wouldn't need, uh, here he is. You don't even need the helmet and the makeup and the suit. Just here he is. He's all set to go. And he, he's pretty terrifying, you know, or, uh, and I could see uh, him going against, uh, Arnold. That would be good, uh, good movie viewing, you know? So I was thinking, well, Gene Simmons, uh, yeah, put him in there to play the Predator. I mean, uh, there you go. You got the alien tongue. He's got the uh, horns popping out all over his body. You know, so uh, he's got a metallic suit. So that works. All right, let's go back to the comments before I get accused of ignoring the viewers. All right, let's see here. Uh, Patrick, uh, what's going on with Patrick? Uh, Patrick B, good evening. Why not? Maybe it was just a holiday trip for the Predator. No, that's possible. Maybe he was on vacation. And he saw this planet. And... Okay, but they don't, they don't explain where he came from and why he was there, what he was doing there. Unless I missed that, you know. Um, what's going on with Patrick here? Something I don't know. I, I don't know what's happening with Patrick. What this is. Something happened. I don't know. Okay. Um, Arnold is a leftist. So, all right. Okay. Wait. Right. Um, they explain in a sequel that Predator is a hunter, that the Predator is a hunter who hunts on different planets purely for sport. Ah, now, yeah, when I looked up uh, the Wikipedia, it turns out there's a whole shitload of sequels based from the Predator film, the first one. Uh, I have no plans to watch any of the uh, sequels. Uh, the first one covered it for me. Uh, Gene, yes, okay, Herman, right, okay. Um, half the guys in the NBA, no, 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 you have to have some performing talent, uh, not, not just being an athlete. All right. Um, did the Predator play bass? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he played a Vulcan musical harp like uh, Spock did. I don't know. All right. Um, let's continue on here. What is that? Uh, all right. So let's continue on. So I was thinking after I watched the movie, who else could have been cast to play Predator besides that fellow Kevin Peter Hall? And I thought, well, Gene Simmons, he was the first, and I think original OC would have gotten into that as well. Um, yeah, perfect, perfect casting. Who else could have played uh, Predator if I was uh, involved with the casting at the time? Well, let's see. Somebody's got to be really scary, really frightening. I mean, really make give you shivers down your spine. Someone that, like this, you know. Uh, so, oh, wow, those are nice teeth. He has a good dentist. Um, somebody just, you know, just make you get, you know, riveted to your movie theater seat and break out into a sweat. You know, somebody just terrifying to play the Predator. Who else? Paul Stanley? Nah, you know, no, nah, no. Nah. I'm sorry, Gene Simmons could. Paul Stanley's basically good. He's not good for anything, really. Not even playing guitar, but enough of that. Yeah, Ellen. Ellen DeGeneres could play Predator. Uh, with or without additional makeup. If I were in the Mexican jungle running for my life and, and this was after me, I'd be I'd be terrified. I mean, I'd be, 
I'd be throwing hand grenades every every hundred feet I was running, just throwing them behind me, you know. Absolutely terrifying. Oh, God. That would have been great casting. Oh. Kathy Griffin uh, would have been an absolute monstrous predator. Uh, with makeup, without makeup, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, absolutely terrifying. She doesn't need the laser uh, destruction gun. Just looking at her will make you just uh, shrivel. Talk about shrinkage. Jesus. Let's catch up on the comments here. Um, Tommy, Patrick B., I'm sorry to hear what happened. I hope you're doing well. I don't know what happened with Patrick B. Can someone tell me what about that? Uh, Big Mike, classy. That's interesting. All right. Jesse Jackson. Well, no, nah, well, he's a performer, that's for sure. But no, nah, he's just a negative. He's just a total turnoff. I mean, he's repulsive. So, no. Kamala. That's interesting casting. But she'd be... Kamala Harris would be have, giving the alien that incredible, hideous, monstrous laugh. Oh, my God. That would send shivers down anybody's back. All right. Um, let's continue on. Uh, let's so I think Kathy Griffin would be absolutely not only terrifying but nauseating as the uh, predator. Oh my god. Oh, I mean, they missed out when they didn't give it to her. Here she is, uh, without makeup with her new uh plastic surgery. What do they call those with the lips? Uh, where they uh put you know buttocks fat into your lips uh, for some reason. Can you imagine being in the Mexican jungle looking for the helicopter and uh, you bump into this thing? Holy shit. <sighs> Terrifying. Yeah, here she is uh, without makeup. I mean, oh my God. You know, on a side, on a side note, um, She's such a vile, sick, twisted head case. You know, her face reflects who she is inside. The outside definitely reflects her inside. Just vile, twisted, sick, depraved, degenerate, no talent. Blech. Amy Schumer could, uh, is she good for casting for uh, The Predator? I mean, I think so. Uh, here's a woman who's acclaimed in Hollywood. She wins all kinds of awards, maybe even an Emmy. I'm not sure. But um, based on absolutely zero talent with total repulsive qualities. And um, her agent could have negotiated a big multi-million deal to be in the Predator series. So, who knows? They may put it on cable and she might get the call. She'll get the call. Predator, you know. You know, it's just like, oh my God. The thing about Hollywood is they think she's a beautiful, highly talented, creative artist. You know, it's uh, it's just amazing. Absolutely. Oh God. Roseanne. Now, how about Roseanne Barr as the Predator here in one of her uh, finer moments in her showbiz career? Disgracing herself, the United States, the national anthem, and everybody who was watching this around the world grabbing her crotch, spitting after she's spitting a large a loogie uh, after she sings, well, after she not sings, after she uh, uh, bastardizes or uh, what's the word? Um, disgraces the, uh, disrespects the national anthem. Just despicable person. Oh, just awful, awful. And I would love to see uh, Rambo or uh, Arnold go after this. Oh, that would be that would be worth. I would pay another three ninety nine for the sequel if she was the predator. Now, talk about a monstrous predator. Oh, I don't know if anybody could be better cast than this. I mean, Gene Simmons is probably the best choice, but what is that on her hair? I mean. This is one of the most revolting homo sapiens on the planet in existence. Um, an epitome, the epitome of stupid, uneducated, uninformed, disinformed, misinformed, malinformed, sick, twisted hater. Vile, 
and she would be fantastic. You know, I actually think she got an Emmy, a grant, uh, what do you call it, an Oscar for some movie. Was that that movie with Patrick Swayze? She got an Oscar for that or some other film? I mean, I mean, listen, when is, uh, why not they give uh, Chuck Norris an Oscar? Lifetime Achievement Award should go to Chuck Norris. If she gets an Oscar, Chuck Norris should get an Oscar. I know Arnold would love to get an Oscar, you know. I mean, they gave Ben Affleck an Oscar and George Clooney. Everybody gets an Oscar, so, you know, why not? But uh, this this would be great casting for the Predator. Oh, holy shit. Now, the makeup, the special effects costumer on the film, would, I don't know how he would approach this for the costume for Predator, but um, interesting about her braids or dreadlocks, whatever you, those are called, um, if we look at uh, the Predator in the movie, the alien, he's got some dreadlock action going on here. So, um, you know what I'm saying is just, uh, you know, stick the helmet on, on this. And uh, you got the monster. You got the alien. Oh, you believe Ted Danson dated her? Of every woman in Hollywood back in the days of Cheers, when he was the number one TV star making tens of millions hand over fist, he could have chosen, he could have picked any supermodel, any actress, any college age beauty, anywhere around the world. And of everybody, anybody in the entire world that he wanted to bang, he picked Whoopi Goldberg. That's a fact. Can you believe that? Oh my God, this is bad. I'm getting shivers just looking at this picture. I'm glad I went to the bathroom and evacuated my bowels and urinated 20 ounces of fluid before I did this show tonight because otherwise I might have to, uh, I might not be able to control my, uh, right now, you know? Oh yeah, so anyway, I was thinking these could all be suitable people to play the alien. And uh, we can't forget about uh, Big Mike, Michelle. I mean, this picture is a real picture. This, When I saw this picture a decade or two ago, whenever that was, I don't remember. Um, uh, my, I immediately thought of the Star Trek episode with the salt creature that um, Dr. McCoy was an uh, old girlfriend of Dr. McCoy who turned into a salt creature. And uh, do you remember that episode? It was the same, looked the same. This is definitely, and, and uh, Big Mike is very, very tall. What, seven foot? Six foot eight, something like that. I don't know. And uh, throw the helmet on her and uh, the laser device on the shoulder. And you got a winner. You got a winning sequel. I mean, this is great casting. Yeah, it's the salt monster from Star Trek. Absolutely terrifying. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely terrifying. Let's go back and check on the comments. I don't want to fall behind. All right, let's see here. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, Jesse Jackson, no, nah, there's no uh, Kamala. No, nah, no, nah, Al Sharpton. No, nah, no, nah, this, no, nah, this is the way to go. Gene Simmons first and choose any one of these for the second if Gene was not available. Is it just me or do the 1980s remind you of better times? I think it's just you. Well, actually, the 80s were better. Every decade's better than what's going on now. Even the decades of the Inquisition was better, were better than today. She looks like Carrot Top on meth. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go back to that. Um, this one here? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Carrot Top was actually a pretty funny guy. And I'm not going to say anything beyond that. He thought I was a very funny guy, too. Uh, I, I liked him. He was, uh, he was a funny guy. Uh, a nice guy. But he went, he went uh, bizarre, strange with the uh, bodybuilding, you know? I can't explain that. But uh, yeah, I, Carrot Top was fine. Okay. Her surgeon was Dr. Uh, okay. System, Crappy, your number one fan declared he's taking a break from YouTube. Who's that? Uh, unfortunately, this means he will be 100% dedicated to you. Who's my number one fan? Is that Herman? Herman was just in the chat. Oh, I know who you mean. 
Patrick, I, I didn't know that. I'm very sorry to hear the news. Sorry to hear that. John Suckhorn as the Predator. Well, he's got the voice. Because at the end of the movie, um, the, pred the Predator, as he's got about to explode, the uh, self self explode, self implode, his detonator, he lets out some kind of laugh. Uh, you know, a, a, a what's that kind of word? Uh, a um, you know, uh, evil, sinister laugh. You know, kind of like you hear on some YouTube channels. That kind of laugh. And uh, I like Suckerhorn. I wouldn't put him as, uh, I wouldn't cast him. No, no. He, uh, no, there's other people better suited for that. There's the, there's the insults again, right? All right. Um, Ghost, that was the movie. Unbelievable. Yeah. Everybody gets an Oscar, so. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the um, when you get to that level of stardom, you're, many people's brains just go haywire. Yeah. The silver lining in the Bangkok debacle, we haven't had to... Uh, right. Well, I don't know. I, I don't watch the channel. Maybe a minute a day. That's Maybe. I didn't watch it at all today because... Uh, Anyway, um, let's see here. Let's continue on. Big Mike might not be able to fit into the cod piece part of the costume. Yeah, you're right, because... Uh, yeah, absolutely right. Uh, they'd have to readjust, uh, retail or... What do they call it? Alter the costume to fit Big Mike. You're absolutely right. Um, I'm, I'm catching up, man. I'm catching up, Patrick. Um, Patrick B. Narc, is, uh, Narc needs an Emmy, Tony, Oscar. Right, I see. Okay. Hello, Guy Gadois. Okay. The maniacal laugh. No, it was, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, almost caught up here. Spring, I'm not going to read that. That's, um, that's borderline bad. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So let's, let's continue on. Uh, let's get back to the, uh, quality content. Um, this is so frightening. Just big Mike, uh, she doesn't even need the, uh, the helmet and the costume, just, uh, the laser beam weapon. And that's it. And actually her going against, uh, Arnold in real life or in the movie. I, I don't know. I mean, that would be a hell of a fight. But I think Gene Simmons is the uh, the best choice because uh, he's very tall. He he's, he knows how to perform in front of an audience and entertain, you know, to juvenile type people, and which is the audience for Predator and uh, basically. And uh, this is the official governor portrait from the state of California. California. Why am I talking like Nicholas California? California. Uh, it's a very nice photo. And uh, there you have it. So um, now what I want to do is get into some more details on the movie Predator to wrap up or conclude the review. So I'm going to change the pictures now. And um, I want to bring up, do I already have it up there? Let's see. Yeah, see, I got so many screens up. I once said, I, I once said on the show, uh, I, yeah, I have 10 screens up. I'm, getting confused here and and my favorite number one fan said yeah he said he had 10 screens up oh what bullshit well, you know, just uh you know whatever anyway all right let's um let's bring this up here on wikipedia just to get some background uh, info on the film just you know flesh out the fine details here this is um yeah there we go and uh right. all right very good so um directed by john mctiernan the first installment in the predator franchise he stars uh, arnold plays dutch schaefer the leader of an elite 
paramilitary rescue team. To save hostages in guerrilla-held territory in a Central American rainforest. Ah, riveting. Um, who encounters the deadly predator, played by Kevin Peter Hall, a skilled, technologically advanced alien who stalks and hunts them down. Here's the cast. Carl Weathers, Elpidia Carrillo, plays the woman, Bill Duke, Richard Ch Chavez, I don't know, Jesse Ventura, Sonny Landham, a real, uh, and Shane Black. Okay. Um, here's the, the production. It spawned three sequels, Predator 2, let's look at that, starring Gary Busey and Danny Glover. Holy shit, Gary Busey. Maria Conchita Alonso, she was very cute back when. So, and Kevin Peter Hall as the alien, as the Predator. Predators, that was in 1990, Predators in 2010, uh, starring Adrian Brody, and some other people I don't know. Okay. The Predator 2018. Unbelievable. Directed by Shane Black, the guy who's one of the team, special team in the movie. Fourth installment of the series. Or six. I, I can't make out what that means. Prey in 2022. American science fiction film in the Predator franchise. It's kind of like, um, you know, Subway restaurants. It's a franchise. The fifth film in the mainline series and seventh in the overall franchise. And this is a prequel to the first four films being set in the Northern Great Plains in 1719. And is that a Native American with a tomahawk? And that's the Predator? What? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm losing track of this. It's just too much. That's, that's Prey 2022. A crossover with the Alien franchise produced Alien vs. Predator films. Alien vs. Predator 2004. Um, yeah, nobody important in that movie. Aliens vs. Predator Requiem 2007. Starring Stephen Pasquale, Rako Ellsworth, John, a bunch of nobodies, okay? And then uh, Dutch Schaefer would return in the video game Alien vs. Predator 1994 and Predator Hunting Grounds 2020. Holy shit. Okay, here's the plot. You know, the plot doesn't matter. It's just the action and the explosions. Uh, Oh, the creature has a plasma cannon. That's what it is. Okay. And uh, all kinds of makeshift uh, traps and weapons because they're Vietnam vets, uh, commandos, and they know all about jungle fighting and all that. And, and uh, big explosions, uh, hand grenades, um, you know, killing, a lot of blood, uh, a lot of guts, a lot of dead bodies. Um, and the end of the movie, as dawn breaks, Dutch is rescued by the extraction helicopter with Anna and the general safely on board, though he is left visibly traumatized by the experience. You know, that's very interesting because the end of the movie, when he gets on, they show him on the helicopter with the general and the girl as the helicopter leaves the area. Ar the look on Arnold's face is nothing dramatic, reflecting the experience the ungodly experience he just had with his special ops team in the jungle, the expression on his face is like, I wonder what they're making for lunch today. I, I'm glad this is the last scene. I've got to call my wife in a few minutes. His look was just like vacant, like nothing. You know, but, you know, it doesn't matter. You don't watch Arnold for the acting. It's not like watching Anthony Hopkins. Following the release of Rocky IV, a joke circulated in Hollywood that since Rocky had run out of earthly opponents, he would have to fight an alien if a fifth film were to be made. Some screenwriters uh, took this as a joke and made a screenplay based on it. And from that, what they call, which they called Hunter, some producers were given, were submitted it. And one guy said, hey, we can make a movie out of this. And that's how the movie uh, 
came about. Joel Silver, the producer of this movie, did Commando, which is basically the same exact film. In Commando, they had uh, Ray Dawn Chong, very attractive uh, Latina woman. And in this movie, they had the other Latina woman. But it's the same story. Just Arnold shooting and killing everybody. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, here's the casting information, right? Jean-Claude Van Damme was originally cast as the Predator with the intent that the physical action star would use his martial arts skills to make the Predator an agile ninja-like hunter. But when the five foot nine Van Damme was compared to Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, Jesse Ventura, all of them over six foot tall and bodybuilding types, uh, it became, it didn't look right. And he was always complaining about the monster suit being too hot, causing him to pass out. And he, he didn't want to be on the movie only in the costume and not being seen. So he was out of the movie and they hired seven foot tall Kevin Peterhall. And because he was only five foot nine, they didn't feel that he was provoking enough fear. Hmm, it's reasonable. And here's where they filmed it. All the story here. Here's all about the visual effects and the monster costume. Uh, the music, um, yeah, um, box office results, critical response. Let's let's go back to the comments so I don't fall that far behind. Okay, let's. Um... <clears throat> All right, let's see here. So, are we reviewing Predator? And I'm not just wrong. Yeah, we are. Right. We as in we. All right. Um, let's see here. All right. Uh, ah. Another insult from Patrick. Okay. AD. Yeah. Okay. A lot of uh, many viewers told Crappy he's got to see Predator. Yeah, that's right. That's why I decided to watch it. Right, Alyssa Milano. Oh, she was the child, his daughter, in uh, Commando. That's right. Boy, is she a Hollywood libtard, wacko, lunatic? Unbelievable. Right. Um, I see. I see. Uh, clearly, not the genre for Crappy. No, that's not true. I like action adventure and. Uh, commando, you know, action films like that. And combat scene movies, combat films. But this movie, you know, it's... I want the acting, not the explosions. You know? But, hey, you know, I'm just saying. All right, let's uh, get back here. So, uh, on the Wikipedia, the critical response, Rotten Tomatoes, 80% based on 60 reviews, an average 7, point, 7 out of 10. Uh, part sci-fi, part horror, part action, all muscle. You know, there was a couple mo scenes in the film which didn't make any sense at all. Arnold uh, pulls out this giant knife. I mean, a giant knife. Five times the size of Paul Hogan, Crocodile Dundee's knife. And he rams it into somebody. One of the, uh, terror one of the um, um, people that he's trying to kill in the jungle. You know, the bad guys. And he goes... Um, uh, stick around, St stick around, but introducing a comedy line, and he did that a few times, detracts from the movie, because now is it an action film as a drama action, or is it just some stupid comedy? So he said, I don't understand those choices, but um, Janet Maslin of the New York Times called the film grisly and dull with few surprises. Yeah, that's, I agree. Uh, Cine Fantastique said, a militarized monster movie tires under its own derivative weight. Oh, I think so. LA Times, arguably one of the emptiest, feeblest, most derivative scripts ever made as a major studio film. Yeah. Variety, slightly above average, that tries to compensate for tissue-thin plot with even more grisly death sequences and impressive special effects. Well, that's all you need to make a movie, you know. Uh, any uh, good comments here? Any positive reviews? Let's take a look. Roger Ebert liked the film. Moves at a breakneck pace. Strong and simple characterizations. 
Well, you know, poor Roger Ebert, you, you, you know, I'd, uh, whatever. It has good location photography and terrific special effects. Good location photography, so does National Geographic Channel. Terrific special effects, you know, so does uh, a Burt Reynolds movie. Okay. Hollywood Reporter. Uh, Well-made, old-style assault movie. Empire Magazine gradually become a sci-fi action classic. Not difficult to see why. The direction is claustrophobic, fluid, and assured, staging the action with a plum and concentrating just as much on tension and atmosphere. A thumping piece of powerhouse cinema. I've got, oh, that's his review. I've got to say that is absolute delusional, deranged uh, nonsense. Reason Magazine says, over the last 30 years, it has come to be regarded as a classic 80s action cinema. A classic of 80s action. Really? I mean, I don't know offhand what 80s action cinema movies are or were. I'd have to look at a list. But um... And then it's, uh, over the years, it um, Predator ranked fourth in Rolling Stone all-time best action films. That's hard to believe, you know. Uh, and on and on and on and on. And so you can check that out. Academy Award nomination for special effects. Um, and here's the franchises and sequels, video games. And there you have it. And uh, I can't believe I watched it. And let's get back to the comments. Okay. Uh, what would your rating for Predator be out of 10? Well, for an Arnold fan, I will bring up the uh, invite link in a second. For an Arnold fan, it's probably a 9, an 8, 9, or 10. Most assuredly, an 8, 9, or 10. Uh, for me, it was just another Arnold disposable nothing film like Commando or uh, a lot of his other movies. So it doesn't even deserve a number as a rating. It's just Arnold uh, fluff, you know. Uh, there's no denying that everybody on the film worked their asses off making the movie. I mean, really tough uh, filmmaking uh, every day, but um, it, it means nothing. You know, it's just uh, you walk out of the theater and eh, you know, whatever. Okay, uh, this show is right. Okay, right. Um, Right, uh, attracting, uh, let's see, a GD, 50 Argentinian pesos. Hey, crappy, what video player do you use to visualize your adult entertainment? I know a guy who swears by VLC. I don't have an answer for you on that, GD, but thank you for the super chat. That's appreciated. Campers, Prey might be the best of the franchise, though I am partial to any of the AVP series. What is AVP? What does that mean, uh, Campers? By the way, let's take a look here uh, on StreamYard. Um, uh, let me update the page here on YouTube. I mean, um, well, look at that. Uh, 31 watching. Thank you very much. Only 12 thumbs up. Well, oh, you know, what can I do? Uh, I don't know what that means. Um, the AVP. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's a classic. So, Gampers, are you saying, am I inferring from your comment that you've seen all of the uh, series, all of the sequels? Uh, because you said you like Prey might be the best. Wow. This is classic crappy, better than, eh, whatever. It's some people here I got to, you know, whatever. Uh, let's see. Alien versus Predator. Is that like uh, Godzilla versus uh, Mothra? Or... Um, yeah, keep keep smoking that dope, AD. You're, you're way off there. You have no idea. Okay. Predator needed to be seen on a big screen. Had a similar ending to Oppenheim. Yeah, I didn't see that movie. Uh, Matt Damon is in it. So that really is a big... Uh... Yeah, I'm going to go to the panel in just a moment. I just wanted to get all this out of the way and... Uh... And, um, right, okay, so there we go. There's the uh, coverage for Predator 1987. And the overall comment is, if you like Arnold, it's a must-see film. And if you're lukewarm or don't really care, or you're just interested in a good action film, it's 
it's a pass. It's not necessary. But um, Rambo one, Rambo two, Rambo three, all much more entertaining. Absolutely. Okay, let's uh, get the invite link up here, and anybody can come on. Everyone's welcome. And uh, when I say everybody, I mean, of course, well, you know, basically almost uh, anybody. We can talk about whatever you want or nothing. I can just sit here and play music uh, in the background. Uh, the kind of music that Forbin always says, turn that shit off, you know. And uh, let's get let's get that posted on the top of the uh, chat. There we go. And let's change that banner uh, to something uh, more annoying. How about, yeah, send money, send money now, support this channel. If you like the quality content or crap content on this channel, uh, help support the channel with your uh, Donations, $1, uh, one Argentinian peso, one U.S. dollar, uh, 500,000 Hong Kong dollars, um, whatever, you know, a couple Canadian dollars, uh, you know, just uh, it all helps out. You know, I have to pay StreamYard every month. I think it's 25 bucks. 25 bucks is a lot of money for someone who doesn't have a Rolex collection. Yeah, uh, Rambo 1 was called... For, that's right, First Blood. I, I liked, I've liked. i seen First Blood many times. Um, I like Rambo 2. Uh, I like Rambo 3. Oh, then, then the Rambo series started to get really ridiculous. Um, yeah, after Rambo 1, 2, and 3, I saw the other ones, but they were really... Uh, really um dismal yeah uh let's see here i'm thinking nachos and going to bed sound pretty good yeah i think so that's uh that sounds all right patrick yeah godzilla minus one is what crappy must see what is that is that a movie Rambo versus Ken. What what is that? You mean like Barbie? Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger was a decent movie with Stallone and John Lithgow. I, I kind of like that. It was all right. Um. Yeah, uh, Baba. Nah, this channel is not for you. You really don't want to be on this channel. It's um, nah. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking it out, but nah. It's, not the right match. Um, Gampers um, won Academy Award for special for best effects. On um, which one? Uh, Rambo. The jet scene is all time. In what movie? Jet scene. It was a great film with Godzilla in it. Is that a movie you're talking about? Um, Godzilla minus one. Is that a movie? Okay, so what was that Robert Downey movie? Um, I'll look at that one uh, when I'm contemplating uh, suicide uh, next time. I'll, I'll I'll watch that movie instead. What was that one with Robert Downey? Um, which is what I thought I was going to watch, but it's... Um, What the hell was that called? Um, it's a comedy, soldier, army, something, movie. Yeah, I'll have to look it up again. I don't remember. In uh, in Cliffhanger, the beginning with the FBI agent spawning. Yeah, I saw that movie when it came out. I don't remember the the exact the scenes, really. Are there any early examples of films or series that led to Rambo, Predator, Aliens? 
and so on. Well, of course, I mean, uh, you go way, way back to early Hollywood. I mean, it's all the same. A Buster Crab as Flash Gordon. What was that, like 1930s, late 30s? Same thing. Yeah. No different. You know, just more special effects, more killing, you know, more gruesomeness. You know, um, there's a lot of movies or TV shows where the episode is um, a certain, some army squad is being picked off one by one. Uh, and then it comes down to the end with the hero or the leader of the platoon uh, going one on one against the uh, the guy who's a sharpshooter, you know, picking people off one at a time. There was an episode of Combat with that exact same story, which was uh, much better than uh, Predator. Or commando. Everyone in Sergeant Saunders' squad is getting picked off one by one, and then at the end they have the big showdown: uh, Saunders and Kirby versus the bad guy, the bad German. Yeah, this is a very standard plot. Plan Nine from Outer Space. I've seen that uh, when I was a kid. I saw it many times. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is a very good film noir with Downey. Oh, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is one of the actors I, um, I just, uh, I'm so reluctant to watch anything that he's in. For, for a variety of reasons. I mean, I just, you know, look, you know, you, you want to watch uh, the actors or the movies that interest you. No different than, you know. You're a fan of a baseball team or that football team and not a different one. So it's no different. Okay. What are your thoughts on the Boeing situation? Any plans to board a 737 MAX? I don't know anything about this, whatever Boeing situation you're referring to. I've been out of the news business or news viewing for quite a while, busy with other stuff. So I'm not up on the latest news on all the various uh, news commentary channels. So I, I don't know anything about that. Crappy, have you addressed the nasty strike rumors? Can you tell me what that refers to, Guy Gadois? If it was Morton Downey Jr., I'm all in. Oh, that guy was uh, really... Ah, oh, jeez. Pence is a traitor. Turncoat traitor. Awful, awful, awful person. Very spooky. I'll let you discover for yourself. What was very spooky? Let me scroll back here. Yeah. Cliffhanger or something different? Don't know. What do you mean? Morton Downey Jr. Christy Nome is a is a woman of interest to me. I, I don't know her details. Uh I don't know much detail-wise about her, but um, she seems like a really uh, excellent governor. And I don't know much about, in terms of a VP, I don't know. Crappy filed the strike against Mookie. Ah, this is what somebody said earlier in the show. Absolute lying bullshit and that's all i can tell you there's absolutely it's uh, totally bullshit made up crap lies based from i guess you know you know who and there you have that Well, they do. It's all he has to do is just keep talking about me. He's, uh, you know. Of 
Crampy, are you sticking with Michelle running against Donald? Uh, you know, as of the most recent reports, she vehemently states she has zero interest in running for president. And on the one hand, you know, why would she? I mean, she's her and her husband have a, or her partner, you know, they're worth over a hundred million dollars. Uh, they have positions of power and pulling the strings behind the scenes. Why? Why does she need to, you know, be in the front? Um, with all that pressure and daily uh, rigid uh, scheduling and activities and faking like she loves the country and loves America and all that. It's better, she's probably better just being behind the scenes, you know, developing her evil plots and and stuff. But uh, put nothing past any of the Democrats. So could it happen? It still could happen, but uh, I don't know. Little Dave, I knew it wasn't you. It was Timeless Timeless Watch Channel Oshin. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. I haven't heard anything about it. Um, but I have no involvement in any way whatsoever with anything on Mookie's channel. I watch it sometimes. And he watches this channel. And that's that. That's it. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, he loves blaming me because uh, he likes it. Remember, he's not a hater. He, I'm sorry, he's not a builder. He's a destroyer. <laughs> that was a quote. Okay, let's see. They shit on his new money possible making venture, and he's not going to allow that. I don't know who you're referring to. Okay. Yeah. Sebastian Gorka did an interview the other day, and he referred to 45's VP pick as a he. You know, this Sebastian Gorka guy, I've watched him on whatever channel he does videos, or his YouTube channel. And he calls himself Dr. Sebastian Gorka, you know, conservative political analyst, commentator, etc. And um, when you read about his background, it's really snaky, snaky, and kind of shifty. Uh, apparently, he, he claims he has a PhD from some, you know, legitimate universities or university in Hungary, if I recall, which is good. That's fine. But in fact, uh, it might all be bullshit made up. And he's not really a, a legitimate. He was never awarded a legitimate or earned a legitimate uh, PhD. He's one of these uh, fake PhD guys. Very possible. So... Um, yeah. What, what is this key? Um, crappies, no, I can't make that out. No mouse, no rat. No, I'm not a rat. Gerbil? Uh, no, not rat, no. Steve Bannon over Gorka. Yeah, you know, I don't follow Steve Bannon that much, or very little, actually. Uh, there's so many people to watch. I, you know, how many people can you watch for commentary and analysis? Um, snaky, snaky, shifty. Should have, yeah, exactly. He's all talk. Yeah, I don't follow him. I, I, I used to watch him rarely here and there, and I just didn't have the, I just don't have the interest in him. I think he's a sneaky, snaky, snaky kind of guy. Gorka is sneaky, a grifter par excellence. Yeah, maybe. I mean, um, uh, the wall debacle. Well, how is that a debacle? The debacle is not finishing it. That's the debacle. But anyway, we're talking about other stuff. Uh, let's repost that link if anybody wants to come on. And when I say anybody, I mean, well, you know, people who uh, want to contribute to the channel, uh, conversation, Craig shit, dollar ninety nine super chat. The anti crappyites can get off the show, leave. Ah, thank you for the uh, super chat, Craig shit, and the uh, nice thought. The answer is no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, thirty six viewers. Thank you everybody for watching the show. 
Appreciate it. Send money now. Send money now. Upvote. Let's change that banner. I don't like send money now. It's it's too it's too much. Let's say super chat. Super chat now. Help support the channel. Help me pay my $25 a month uh, StreamYard bill. Help me buy frozen Stouffer's dinners. You know, the uh, chicken parmesan Stouffer's uh, frozen dinner is pretty good. I bought four of them. And I think I have two in the freezer. So I would recommend that one. And... Um, Stouffer's, I would go with the chicken parmesan. It's a, you know, chicken with some spaghetti. Uh, you put it in the microwave for six minutes, and it's done, and it's it's pretty good. I don't know about the quality of the food in the Stouffer's factory, you know. I can't comment about that. But, um, yeah, uh, Pence is a turncoat and a traitor. And part of the Hollywood, uh, sw uh, Hollywood the Washington Swamp. He's... Um, He's uh, spineless. Does that answer the question, Frank? Yeah. Okay. You should do a TV dinner show with Mike the Snake. Uh, that would be interesting. You know, they don't call them TV dinners. That was from the 60s. Um, or maybe earlier in the 50s. I don't know when they first came out. But um, they're frozen dinners. That's what they call them. Frozen dinners. Um... Anybody looking for... I talked about this with Ron the Shrink once. Uh, I recommended the uh, Chicken Parmesan by Stouffer's to him. He said, I'll check it out. Uh, Marie Callender, they have uh, some good ones too. Um, you know, their sweet and sour chicken frozen dinner. It's very, very tasty. But I looked at the uh, nutrition label on the back of the box. And the amount of added sugar is like... 26 grams it's like um uh six it's like adding six packs seven pack seven packets of sugar that's why it tastes so good and it's so sweet so uh unless you don't care about added sugar uh the the uh, marie calendar's uh, sweet and sour chicken is really good but um if you're if you're concerned about sugar then don't get that one i like the uh, marie calendar meatloaf but when I read the ingredients, it's uh, pork and beef. And I just don't, I'm not into eating pigs. I just, you know. Now, they do make uh, Salisbury steak, which is beef. And the Stouffer's Salisbury steak is pretty decent. I don't know how the cows are treated, you know, when they, when the meat gets processed by the Stouffer's company. But it's, uh, it's pretty decent, you know. In Japan, they have their own version of Salisbury steak. And I'm sure uh, Marcelo knows this, of course. Um, and what they call it is hamburg steak. Hamburg steak. So it's like a hamburger with a brown, brownish kind of gravy on it. But it's a larger steak, uh, hamburger patty. Like six ounces, maybe. And um, they use their own peculiar flavoring in their sauce. It's very good. But that's called hamburg steak. Or Herman would certainly know that, uh, maybe. Uh, let's see here. Gampers, will Chuck Schumer come to the cave to the communist insurrectionists who have infiltrated the party and support? Yeah, he's he's slime. So, yeah. He'll do whatever uh, hurts the country. Okay, Patrick. B, fair enough. I love pigs. Okay. Okay. Well, Patrick, uh, since you're in Texas, what do you think about feral hogs in Texas? Out there in East Texas, Nacogdoches and all around there. Uh, are you including that in your I Love Pigs? Because those Texas feral hogs and uh, up in Oklahoma too. I mean, those are uh, mean motherfuckers. And There's lots of videos on YouTube of uh, hunting videos uh, shooting feral hogs in Oklahoma and East Texas. Nighttime shooting and daytime shooting. And man, those things are... Uh, Man, I would definitely get in on that. Go to East Texas, fly into, you know, what would be the nearest airport? Well, Nacogdoches, I don't know if those towns, Tyler, Marshall, if they have airports, but um, fly to Dallas and then uh, 
load up the Jeep and head out to East Texas with the guys and stop, you know, get the gear and uh, shoot them all. Mike, question for Crappy in the chat. Do you have a favorite childhood cartoon? Well, yeah, I, I love uh, childhood cartoons. Uh, the Warner Brothers characters would be the favorites. And of all the uh, Warner Brothers, I would say um, I liked all of them. Um, I really liked Daffy Duck. I never thought Donald Duck was funny at all. I never thought Mickey Mouse cartoons were, or films were funny at all. Never. I never thought any, any of the Disney uh, cartoons were funny. I'm mystified at their worldwide success. It's just amazing. Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny and the Warner Brothers characters are totally superior by any measure. But uh, Daffy Duck, uh, Elmer Fudd, Bugs Bunny, and, you know, Foghorn Leghorn, Yosemite Sam was fantastic. There's a great one of Yosemite Sam on a ship, like a pirate ship with uh, Bugs Bunny. And, uh, wow, that's great. Okay. And, of course, Taz, the Tasmanian Devil. The first appearance of Tasmanian Devil was with Daffy Duck. That was a, that's a great one. Okay. But those, yeah. <clears throat> Little Dave Bugs Bunny. Okay. Fractured Fairy Tales. I remember those. I used to watch that. Wacky Races. I don't know if I know that. G.I. Joe. The Predator Review may be thinking of it for some reason. I don't know if when I was a kid I had a G.I. Joe thing. I don't know. I, I think I had a Mr. Potato Head. In fact, I did. I did have a Mr. Potato Head. Everybody did. Yeah. You make me think of Buck Henry. He did on Saturday Night Live. Ricky Rott. Um... I remember who he was. Um, yeah, he was uh, not on my list of favorite comedy talents, but uh, yeah, all right. I used to watch uh, Woody Woodpecker, sure. Yeah. Set up the hog hunt. With, yeah, right. No, um, right. Um, Jetsons. I used to watch the Jetsons. Every, that was on like Saturday morning cartoons. I used to watch the Jetsons all the time. Flintstones. Um, every All of them. Not all of them. Because then they started getting into like um, really stupid kids cartoons. Cartoon shows like um, the one with the big dog. The stupid dog and the dopey dorky kid. Um, Scooby-Doo. I never watched that. That was, you know. And um, there was some live action thing. Um. It all started changing from cartoons to uh, costumed live action stuff. Uh, I forgot the names of any of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Baba, go over back, go back over to Marcelo, you know, uh, remind him that he needs to ban me. That's what, you know, per Curly, per Curly's instructions, like, you know, that's what you did before. So go back and remind him to ban me, just to be sure I'm banned. Yeah. That would be better you see your time than hanging out here. This, yeah, or whatever, you know. Okay. 31 viewers. What else is there to talk about? Mike the Snake created Scooby-Doo. I never understood the Scooby-Doo and, uh, I mean, in terms of entertainment, uh, I just didn't find it anything worth watching. There were all kinds of cartoon character shows back then. Uh, Megilla Gorilla, uh, George of the Jungle. That had a pretty good theme song. In fact, they made some stupid movie of that with, um, you know, the guy who won an Oscar recently. Um, what, what was his name? Um, Dudley Do-Right. I liked that when I was a kid. Boris and Natasha. 
Crusader Rabbit. Rock, oh, it was Rocky and Bullwinkle with um, Simon Bar Sinister. What was that? That was Dudley Do Right. Uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle and um, Boris and Natasha. That was it. Since you haven't been following the news, McDonald's had a global outage. What if it had been Popeyes? I don't know anything about that story. I don't go to McDonald's. McDonald's is just garbage. I mean, um, Bill Clinton said, yeah, you know, he likes McDonald's. And then when he got picked on for that, he said, well, you know, they do offer good salads. Yeah, I like those salads, you know. <sighs> yeah, I mean, uh, McDonald's just awful. I know people like McDonald's coffee, but look, you know. Ah, Gampers, yeah. Crap. Has the cracked tooth changed what you've been eating? No, it hasn't. Uh, I spent the last two days, or much of the last two days, looking for a new dentist because my plan changed. And um, so now I have to choose a new dentist. And of course, uh, I really uh, overdo it on picking doctors because um, it's important. And uh, so I, I made a list up yesterday of like 10. And then today I finalized it down to like three. And then I picked one and I called the office and they're closed Fridays. So uh, they're only open Monday through Thursday. So I'll call Monday and make an appointment. And then if that's not available, it's said of, you know, now accepting patients. But if that one's not available, then I have two more after that. In the final list so have you done a favorite fast food burger restaurant show i've done many restaurant shows uh, chick-fil-a uh, popeyes um uh, some other ones i don't remember the names um, some awful chicken place i went to oh it was awful raising canes in portland was absolutely absolutely awful though People who watch the channel in other states, they said they liked Raising Cane's. That's a chicken tenders kind of restaurant. Yeah, see you, loser. Ah, incredible. You know, I think it's time. I've put up with enough, you know. I think it's time. Yeah, uh, that's it. We just uh, get rid of that uh, albatross and um, Craig. I'd be happy to talk with you on the show, but I don't want to talk about that restaurant. It's it's just going to get me in trouble. Uh, Aunt Fanny's Cabin is a rest was a restaurant in the suburbs of Atlanta. It was there for many, many, many decades, and um, I went there once or twice in the late 70s, and um, it was a remarkably extraordinary experience. I couldn't believe it, and I really, um, it would be very difficult to tell the story without getting a strike or a complaints or a ban or, you know, an episode taken down, or it's just too risky. Uh, correct. Well, uh, if you want to use the word friends, yeah, at one time, I'd say so. Uh, up until about, um, up until about a year ago. And I have uh, screenshots of everything. Uh, I don't see a purpose of doing a show based on that, though. But, um, yeah, you know. What can I tell you? Craig, uh, did you ever go to Aunt Fanny's cabin? Craig appeared on my channel one time. It was a really terrific appearance, but uh, he just came on for the one time, uh, a year or two ago, maybe.
Yeah, I think about friendship. I know I'm old fashioned and kind of fucked up in the head, but uh, to me, uh, friendship involves uh, loyalty, and you know, both ways. And um, I value that. Otherwise, it's not a friendship, really. It's just you know, there's friend, there's friends, and then as who what was his doc? I'm not his friend, friend. Yeah. I mean, there's pals, buds. Somebody you know, etc. Then friends, good friends, and you know, whatever. But um, yeah, I, I don't shit all over friends, you know. Greg, uh, I did. Wow, okay. I also went to Mrs. Peters outside of Kansas City. Same experience. I never heard of that place. I don't know if I've ever been to Kansas City. Maybe I landed. I think I was at the airport one time, just transferring. Or uh, just as a stop, so I have no Kansas City experience. How many gas balloons would you have in Thailand, Mike? I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So I don't know what that means. Gampers, um, long day at the bagel factory tomorrow. See you. Thank you, Gampers. I'll see you later on. All right, we still got 26 viewers. So, um, hey, let's get another picture back up on the screen. There's no reason to be, uh, to have nothing on the screen there. Give me a second. Yeah. This, are, you know, this, uh, this, there's this. He's a real Schwarzenegger movie guy. He really likes Arnold's movies, especially Commando. Craig Shit, dollar ninety nine super chat, uh, crampy. You have my support. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much. That's awfully nice of you. Terrific. Let's get a. That's a real professionally uh, hair and makeup lighting kind of photo. That's the official governor's picture. Let, let's get a more interesting picture. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty terrifying. I'll tell you. Those sunglasses look pretty good. Does anybody know what those sunglasses are? I like the way they curve around to block out the sun on the on the sides. Those look good. Anybody know what sunglasses those are? I bet you OC would know. Craig shit must be one hell of a racist. Well, okay, whatever. Let's uh, oh. oh, 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 oh. Oh my God! Holy shit! I mean, holy fuck! Paul Stanley is just like... I mean, I'm not a Kiss fan in, in any manner whatsoever, but at least Gene, Gene and Gene Simmons. I don't know how much of a nice or a good guy he is, but you know, he does have some redeemable qualities, I guess. As a performer, maybe. Yeah, let's, uh, I like, uh, let's just go with, uh, oh, I mean, we'll go with that. That's pretty ghastly right there. You think maybe they're Ray-Bans? Hey, I have a question uh, for anybody who knows about luxury sunglasses, which is, a lot of people on these channels. Um, Marcelo inhaled quite a few nitrous oxide balloons in Thailand. I was just wondering how many you would have. I I, I wouldn't do any. Uh, I have, uh, you know, yeah, whatever. Uh, when you buy Ray-Ban sunglasses, do when someone buys Ray Ray-Ban or um, Kiss is utterly talentless. Well, yeah, you have to look at them as, well, it's not a musical group. It's not, they're not musicians, they're businessmen. So in that regard, uh, they have the talent. But um, musically, they, uh, all right. Um, oh my God. Oh. Oh, maybe we'll just keep it with this picture, since that was the theme of tonight's show. Um, 
Yeah, I don't follow him. Uh, yeah, so when um, this has the Arnie Seiko. Okay, because I thought he also had or had the Willard watch, the Willard Seiko from Apocalypse Now that Martin Sheen wore. But maybe he has, yeah, he has the Arnie, I guess, or both. I'm not sure. Uh, when someone buys luxury sunglasses, whatever brand they are, uh, if you wear, if someone wears prescription glasses, do they buy the Ray-Ban or whatever brand and have the uh, eyeglass store remove, for example, the Ray-Ban lenses and put in prescription replacement lenses? Or do people never do that who buy Ray-Ban and luxury brand sunglasses? I, I never knew that, how that worked. Does anybody have a comment on that for the 23 viewers watching? Fifteen thumbs up. Okay. Anybody? Yes, you have to get the lens from your optometrist. So, in other words, Frank, people do buy the Gucci, Ray-Ban, whatever bullshit luxury brand that they want. And then at the eyeglass optometrist, whatever store, then they replace the lenses with new ones that they order from the optometrist. Okay, I guess that's how it works. So it's expensive. Yeah, so not only are they paying a ridiculously high price for for example the ray-ban not the imitation ray-ban but the, the brand name ray-ban glasses but then they're removing the the lenses to put in prescriptions oh what well, what's this no you give your ray-ban dealer your prescription and ray-ban sends prescription lenses really that's unbelievable i never knew that I never asked anybody at the eyeglass department at Costco or any op optical store how that works, but uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, if you know your script, you can get it from the factory, but it's still an extra cost. Interesting. So now th then you're getting the Ray-Ban frame with the official Ray-Ban brand lenses. No, we don't do any catfishing on this channel. So how long have we been on tonight so far? 116 minutes. All right. It's all exotic crap anyway. Hmm, yeah. But those, those particular glasses, um, they look very good. Like they really cover the eyes. Uh, on the bottom and on the edges, on the sides. I can't make out any name, but I bet you some Gene Simmons fan would know. I like sunglasses I can wear to the range. Wiley X makes ballistic rated sunglasses. Okay, yeah, I use... Um, Protective eyewear over, you know, regardless. Gene Simmons wore Oakley's. Okay, I'll, I'll look at the Oakley's website and Ray-Ban and see what those are, if I can find them. I have a warranty card from Ray-Ban that lists my lens color and prescription. Cost another $225. Wow, okay. Average rate of the weirdo. Nah, not really. Uh, okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll hang on for another five or ten minutes. And when I say hang on, I mean, you know, hanging on. And we'll see if anybody would like to join the show. Otherwise, um, maybe I'll take a shower after the show. I haven't taken a shower in a couple of weeks, so maybe today's the day. Usually I wouldn't be, well, I mean, not usually, always, I would never be influenced by anything from Gene Simmons or by what he says or what he does. But 
Those glasses look good. So I'll look for those. So Herman, what did Herman say here? Um, I just lost that. Three streams simultaneously. So there's other shows right now. Yeah. So on the other shows, they're they're insulting me and calling me names and asshole, loser, piece of shit, scumbag. Love it. Yeah. That's all they do. That's all they know. Well, it's not all they know. It's about 99% of what they do. But anyway. So it's Friday night, 947 here on the West Coast. And, uh, you know, we got this change in the clock recently. And I hate it. I fucking hate it because um, today was very warm. I don't know the temperature, maybe upper 60s. It was terrible. It was totally sunny. No jacket required outside. Uh, hot, sunny. 68 is that's uh, getting towards um, over 75 ruins it for me. And now it's going to be a hot, miserable fucking summer here. And um, but the last uh, several months were great. Was were really great. Tons of rain and. Totally gray, cloudy, dark, dismal, everyday weather. It was great. Yeah. But um, if I hang on till next, uh, the end of October is when the weather changes and it becomes uh, October, November, December, January, February, March, six months of total darkness, gray clouds. It's great. So Thomas seemed to know all about the Predator movie, but uh, maybe he's gone to another channel or something. But um, he knew all the li all the lines from it. Hmm. So the next movie I'll watch will be that movie with Robert Downey Jr. that a lot of people have said is really good and or funny. And I don't know the name. It's uh, he plays. There are a bunch of so guys. They're they're soldiers or something. But it's a comedy. Somebody mentioned it way way back in the show, but I don't remember what it was because of my brain shrinkage. I'll look up Robert Downey's list of movies and. I'll find it that way. That's it. Thank you, Mike. Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Uh, I'll watch a couple trailers on YouTube and uh, see if it's uh, doable, as George would say. It's 4.50 in the morning in England. Yeah, you're right. What are you doing awake, Max? Rewatch First Blood instead of any Robert Downey bullshit. Yeah, I've watched First Blood many times. So, yeah. Order some blue blockers. What are those? Some kind of sunglasses? Next time I'm, I'm at Costco, I'll look at the eyeglasses, see what they have uh, for sunglasses.
Okay. That's a good use of your time. Yeah. Really? Okay. So uh, I'll ask the guy. I'll ask the uh, the optician guy at Costco if that's how that Ray Ban thing works and if they arrange that or how they do that. Uh, probably, you know, it's like Richie Blackmore, the guy's what, he must be, uh, 76 around that. Like all the other guys, all his contemporaries are all 75 to 78. Most of those guys, all those guys. And, um, Richie Blackmore has got, uh, he's got the wig. I mean, it's like, uh, ridiculous, but he won't grow old. He needs to have the wig for his image. Same thing with Jeff Beck. Jeff Beck did the wig thing, you know. That was his look. He didn't want to change it, I guess. You know, whatever. Which series does everyone prefer, Rocky or Rambo? Well, in the Rocky series, I really just like Rocky Three the best um, with with Mr. T. Of the Rambo series, I like one, two, and three. But I can't say one's better than the other. There was actually a talk a long, long time ago as a joke. But look, they made this movie Predator. And that began as a joke. So anything's possible. After Rocky 1, 2, or 3, or Rambo 1, 2, and 3, uh, there was a thought of, well, how about as a sequel, uh, Rambo goes to rescue Rocky. Like, let's say Rocky's in the Soviet Union for a, you know, boxing match or he's in some country you know some dangerous country for the world championship and he gets kidnapped and held hostage and he's such an american international celebrity that uh no hostage uh negotiations can be done and no ransom dare be paid by the u.s so the u.s uh, looks up rambo you know who's somewhere in a buddhist monastery in thailand or something you know and uh, they give, and uh, Colonel Troutman gives him the assignment. He's got to go into Bulgaria or Albania, wherever he is, and rescue Rambo as a matter of national pride. Something like that. And that would be the movie. And it makes as much sense as anything else. Okay, Rambo won First Blood. Uh, Rambo, there were two Rambos. One was the returning Vietnam veterans. And then the other one was Afghanistan. Uh, the veterans one was pretty good. Um, that's when he says to uh, the guy back at the headquarters uh, hut, I'm coming for you. And he grabs the microphone. That was very good. Uh, Rambo 3 was in Afghanistan. That one was, uh, it was okay. The, uh, the Russian bad guy general, he was really good. Colonel, he was terrific. He was an excellent actor. Rocky IV was the best of the Rocky series. Was that the one in Russia? I thought that was the weakest. Yeah. Mm hmm. Rambo III is, he goes to Afghanistan to rescue Colonel Troutman. That was it. And it started off okay, but then got really like ridiculous. Yeah. Colonel Troutman's being held prisoner by uh, terrorists in Afghanistan or something like that and uh, he has to go rescue him. It wasn't that good. And then the ramp then I saw there was a Rambo 4 and 5 or 6, I don't remember. Those were really like uh, absurd. Yeah. Well, okay, so coming up on 10 o'clock, we'll wrap up the show in two minutes. Unless anybody would like to uh, jump on the panel. There are lots of shows on, I'm sure, on the other channels all over YouTube. 
you can always go over there and check them out and hear everybody hear certain people say what a absolute lying bastard asshole scumbag I am you can always you know enjoy that content Maybe I'll surprise uh, Herman and finally watch Ron by Kurosawa. He's been on my ass for about two years to watch that movie. Ron, R-A-N, a, a real masterpiece kind of film. Maybe I'll do that. I mean, if I paid three ninety nine to watch Predator, I mean, I don't know what's holding me back to watch, I mean, a really good film. That really good being in the uh, eye of the beholder so to speak you know a lot of people liked um who was that guy um the guy who got arrested in sarasota for jerking off in the movie theater what was his name um peewee peewee's adventure movie whatever that is peewee's big time yeah <clears throat> Uh, I saw the first Alien movie, and um, I don't remember if I saw Alien 2, or I don't know how many Alien movies there were. I remember only the first one. If there was a, I remember, I might have seen others, but I, I can't recall. I thought it was okay. I wasn't blown away by it. Yeah, that guy, Paul Rubens, he made some Pee Wee movies, just... Total trash. Be we Herman, yeah. But if you like that, you like it. You know, it's okay. Don't be so negative. Did you know that Predator was inspired by Rastafari? That's why he had dreadlocks. I had no idea on the uh, uh, creation of the uh, Predator character figure. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's like watching a Tom Cruise movie from that movie from way, way back, um, where he plays the uh, the uh, the Air Force pilot. Uh, you know, uh, a Top Gun. Man, what absolute nonsensical garbage! Don't say that. You're so negative. I mean, it just it just bubble nothing. nothing. But uh, listen, it's my opinion. Yeah, uh, three year old kids, and uh, I don't know who, which maybe I, I don't know. Uh, whatever. Of Tom Cruise, were you ever approached by Sam Baldwin? Um, interesting. Um, hmm. The answer is yes, but uh, in no way in hell did I ever, in the sense, from the get go, get involved. Sort of that. Yeah, they uh, they to recruit new people by all kinds of uh, a variety of methods and techniques. It's, uh, whatever. Kiwi was ahead of his time in being a deviant and a children's entertainer. Was he a deviant? I don't know anything about that. I'm, I don't feel right saying he was a deviant. I'm not aware of anything regarding that. He'd be doing drag shows and drag stores and paid for 
I don't know anything about him uh, being a deviant of any sort. So. Yeah, I heard somebody on some uh, news show say, how come all these drag queen story hours, how come the only people that want to read their stories to our children? Good about it. No, I, I just think he was a talent list or low talent comedian. Kind of sad. To me. I never found that Andy Kaufman funny. I thought he was a sad guy. But that's just me. I mean, he was okay on the TV show Taxi for the first year or so he was on. And then when he went into his solo career thing, it was, you know, it was really unpleasant to watch. I mean, he did get arrested for beating his meat at the theater. Well, listen, who out there has never took a chicken out of a movie, in a movie theater? I mean, and call a guy deviant for that. And, and he was at an X-rated movie. So, I mean... Okay, sound's cutting out. Well, then that means it's time to wrap it up. So, that ends the show. Thank you, everybody, for watching the show. Thank you for the super chats. Uh, E-Clan, TD, Craig Schmidt. Made a fortune tonight. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody, and see you later.